Hi, my name is Loki and uh, let us begin. AR has received a lot of attention recently as Google announced their Project Glass last Wednesday, the 4th of April. Now, if you've yet to see their video, I urge you to go watch that before continuing with this one. Now, I won't be talking much about Google's project because that has already been covered very well by the media. Um, what I am here to talk about is the potential AR has and some existing technologies that will greatly enhance the augmented reality experience. The glass display seen on Google's prototype has two major drawbacks. Firstly, it's very, very tiny, and secondly, it's alone, and that allows for no depth perception of virtual objects. There is no 3D. Loomis, a company that specializes in transparent displays, has shown off two displays this year, uh, one of which is suspiciously similar to the one that Google uses in their prototype, although neither company will say anything, uh, while the other one is of a more normal size. Now, it's these normal ones that I'm really interested in. They have double the field of view, quadruple the pixels, and most importantly, they can be paired together to form a proper pair of eyeglasses, uh, and thus enabling depth perception of virtual objects, 3D. Yes. It is also worth noting that Epson, the printer company, is already selling transparent 3D glasses, although unfortunately those don't go far regarding AR. They don't even have a camera. All right, so that's displays. Let's move on to interaction with your device. Now that's navigating menus, snapping photos, messaging, etc., etc. Uh, Google seemed to be all about voice and some sort of head bobbing. I'm not particularly fond of either of those things, uh, although I do believe that voice is still quite important uh, for now. So how in the world are you going to navigate your device? You really gotta use your head on this one, because your brain emits electrical signals a neuro headset can pick up and translate into computer commands. Yes, it's that cool. And you can even buy that right now for $300. Yes. And if that's not enough for you, eye tracking could be used to add much greater precision to your already ridiculously cool Jedi powers. Okay, that was interaction. Next up is audio. Now, AR should get as far out of your way as it possibly can as far as interruption goes. And traditional headphones aren't exactly good at that. They constantly sit in or around your ear and interfere with sounds you hear from your environment. That's not good for AR. Bone conduction headphones, such as the Aftershocks, sit just in front of your ears on your cheekbones and allow you to hear the outside world just as well as the digital sounds. Wow. They are of course no substitute for your noise-canceling headphones, but they are perfect for AR. So, now we've got a headset sporting a transparent 3D display Sensors that can read your mind, sensors that know where you're looking, and headphones that don't interfere with sounds from the physical realm. Unfortunately, this is not quite feasible today due to battery, uh, processing power, cost, and bulk. However, I really do hope, and I think it's not unreasonable to expect this uh, within the next five six years, or a device with similar capabilities.
capabilities. So the question is, what are you going to do with such a device? How is that going to improve your life? You've already seen Google's video, and I've mentioned gaming, navigation, and art. Um, well, AR would bring the most immersive gaming to date, uh, and you would be able to find artwork virtually anywhere, stunningly beautiful and interactive artwork. And the best part is, of course, that you can choose whether you see it or not. As for navigation, you would be able to follow a floating thread to reach your destination and of course like with a smartphone you could look in the direction of restaurants or bars and see ratings. Now let's say you're traveling in a different country. You might come across a sign or a menu at a restaurant that you have no idea what says. So you look at it and it translates before your eyes. And, of course, you would be able to read customer reviews of products as you browse the supermarket. The point is that you can do a lot of cool and useful stuff with an AR headset. What gets me really excited, though, is interaction with physical objects, such as clicking a virtual button to close a door. Or using your mind to launch a fleet of drones to do whatever you want to do with a fleet of drones. We live in interesting times. Now, you may or may not have noticed that I said nothing about the advertisements that seem so inevitable in a corporately owned AR system. Uh, I do have some opinions on this and I do plan on making a future video discussing that subject. So. Uh, Stay tuned, I guess. And neither did I say anything about social networking and facial recognition. I find that a very difficult subject. Uh, I might discuss it at a later date, but we'll see about that. Finally, uh, if you enjoyed this video, I feel like I have to recommend you read this book. It's what got me hooked on augmented reality and uh, it's the only book to really stick to me. So uh, that's it. Thank you for watching.